Okay, I'm working on another uh, holster for a revolver. Uh, this is just a straight up normal pancake style holster with a um, kind of a vertical. It's not tilted one way or the other. Uh, if you tilt it really far back one direction, it's a cross draw. If you tilt it forward a little bit the other direction, it's considered to be usually more concealable, but I don't know if that's true. It depends on the person probably and how they're shaped as much as how the holster is shaped. But anyway, this is just going to be straight up and down uh, pancake style revolver holster for larger framed revolvers. Uh, something a big 357 and above type of, um, but not, you know, anything ridiculous like a Smith & Wesson 500 or anything like that, obviously. Uh, it probably wouldn't even fit a judge because it's not long enough here. But anyway, this piece is uh, just the stitch lines for where the holster is going to go and for marking the stitch lines. This is the front piece of the holster and the little slots cut for the belt slots. And then I've got the back piece of the holster. So eeny, meeny, miny, they ain't no mo. But I've already got the leather pieces cut out from these and kind of marked up a little bit. And basically that's what I have here. I've got my back piece and a lining piece for it. I've got my front piece and a lining piece for it. I did not cut the belt slots into the back piece yet because I prefer to have it all stitched together and then I'll punch out and cut those. Uh, because these pieces can tend to move and shift a little bit um, while you're trying to stitch it if you've got that cut out already on both pieces. So I just did the front because that'll have it marked for where it all needs to be. So, pretty much going to get right into putting this together. I'm going to uh, mark where I can do some stamping on this and stamp it up because why leave something plain and get it colored and hopefully get it put together real quick. Alright, now that I've got stamped up, I'm going to do a little bit of kind of finishing work. I'm going to bevel the edges, at least on the front here, um, and then probably in this area that's going to be the front of the back piece, basically from right there to right there. In these areas, it's going to be stitched together, and I want those to stay uh, square edges so that it makes a nice square fit there. So I'm not beveling much on that. We'll bevel a little bit down here on what's going to be that open toe of the holster. And this one I'm going to bevel pretty much all the way around it, the whole thing. Now you can do this later. Uh, before you finish it up, you can bevel it. And I'll probably touch up some of it anyway then. But there's also... Um, before you put the uh, stain or finish on it, it helps to have it beveled. As usual with pieces that are stamped like this, I like to use antique stain. Sometimes I'll use a dye and then an antique stain. But on this one, I'm just going to go straight up with a tan antique stain. This stuff gets messy, so a pair of gloves is highly recommended. I also think you should have a paper towel around, which I don't get. Wipe it off as soon as you get it on there. Uh, let me go grab one of those. And like almost everything I use that stains and finishes, my favorite way of doing it is sheep wool scraps. Um, 
This is just a shearling that I've cut down to a real low nap. Now, you can just keep working with your sheep wool scrap to try and get even. Like I said, I like to have a paper towel around. And before it has a chance to dry on any of the surfaces, just kind of buff off some of that excess. Now, just personal preference on this, but I like to use a spray-on finish for over antique stains. Uh, if you use a wipe-on finish, I always wind up getting swirls and marks in it, so I think it's easier to use something that sprays on. All right, next is to glue our lining piece onto the back of this. As usual, I'm going to use barge contact cement for that. Lots of different glues work. Now, one of the nice things about pancake holsters is that you're putting the pieces together flat. So when you glue it up, it's pretty easy to just lay those pieces out and flatten them on there. You don't have to worry about any curves or wrapping around. And then you can just trim the edges afterwards. That part, I've got my trusty trim knife. Alright, now first a little bit of stitching. I need to stitch across the top here and across here where they're going to be the openings of the holsters. And then I can come back up and do some edge finishing on those places before I stitch all the rest of it together and finish it up. Alright, now I got the top and bottom of each side of the uh, front and back holsters all stitched together. That's going to be where it's going to be open up at the top and down here at the toe. All the rest of this is going to get stitched again and we don't want to um, bevel those off or anything because we want a nice flat surface to make together. But this top part we want to have it finished before we get it put together because it's a lot easier to have it already finished. Once you got it stitched, each piece is in the way. So basically right where I stitched it, make sure that I've got enough of it beveled off. And then I'm gonna use a really dark brown dye called Show Brown along that edge. Alright, then I'm going to go ahead and put across that top and bottom some gum drag again and burnish these edges. Now, like most edge burnishing I found, whether you're using tokenol or gum drag again or saddle soap or wax or whatever, it helps to put it on and let it soak in for a bit. Uh, not as much with the wax because it doesn't really soak in. You want it to get sort of sticky before you um, start to burnish it. Otherwise, you're really just kind of wasting your time. And if you do it right, you'd have a nice, smooth, glossy, dark edge. Uh, and you shouldn't be able to hardly tell where which thicknesses of leather you use to line it. They should look like one solid piece. Alright, now it's going to be back down to the sewing machine to actually sew these two pieces together. That means all the way around this year, all the way around up and around this year. Okay, now it is stitched, 
And I did take it off camera to a belt sander and sanded these edges. And you can see some of the dark brown is still there, but I'll have to touch it up. That's why you don't finish your edges there until after this. And I also still need to punch out and cut out the last of these holes. Now we need to cut these out. There's a couple different ways to do it. You can use a round knife, you can use a uh, just a basic utility knife blade. But I always find it's easier to do it after it's all stitched together like this. You just have to be careful to go straight up and down on your cuts so you don't cut sideways into your stitches. One of the advantages of a trim knife is you kind of use it like a, a wood carving knife almost. To even up edges and smooth them out. Okay, now just like our edges around the outside need to be beveled, so do our edges around these belt loop holes. Now that we are back to die and uh, working around our edges to burnish them up. All we got to do is wet it down and shape it. All right, now ran it under some water real quick so it's flexible. Now it's just a matter of putting it in, in, in this case, a blue gun and shaping it to it. How much you shape it will make a difference on how well it retains what you put in it. Of course, how tight it fits to start with will make a difference as well. Um, in this case, since it's a revolver, you can actually shape up over top of the cylinder a little bit and it'll stay in there no matter what you do. Uh, if you want to make it easier to reholster, you can roll that out a little bit. Again, it kind of depends on the preference of who you're making it for. You can do a little bit of both. Um, you can kind of roll over the back, roll out the front. That's pretty much a finished pancake holster. This pattern is made to fit just a little bit larger framed pistol than this. Um, I had a blue gun for a GP100, but that's not the pistol that it's actually really made for. Uh, this will fit something that's probably in the range of Smith & Wesson's large uh, frames. The end frame, I think it is. Um, not positive about that. I'd have to look it up. But anyway... Something in the little bit bigger range. It does fit this GP100 pretty well. I mean, it's got a lot of extra room, but it does retain it because it's molded to it. Um, but there's a little bit of wiggle in there if you really try. So it's not a real tight fit, but it is a, a firm, secure fit for a medium frame, um, which the GP100 is kind of right around in the medium, large frame category. Um, it's a little chunky for a medium frame. Um, at least that's my understanding of it. But it should fit a lot of different revolvers that are 357, 44 Special, 44 Magnum even, uh, because it does have that extra room for that larger, like I said, end frame cylinder, uh, which would be just about an eighth of an inch bigger than the cylinder that's in most 357 revolvers with the medium frame. There's not a huge difference in the frame size. So that's basically what this holster will and this pattern will fit. 
I'm going to release on our Etsy site um, in the very near future, maybe even before this video comes out, the pattern that I'm using for it. And also a pattern that's very similar, but it's tilted. It's um, canted just a little bit forward. Uh, what's called butt forward on the cant a lot of times. So the butt of the pistol is actually kind of over the center of the holster rather than off to the side. Uh, supposedly improves concealability. Like I said, I'll have both patterns out. People can pick which one they want, which they prefer.